Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today, in this video, I am going to show you how to use Q in FreeRTOS. We will cover the entire topic in 2 to 3 videos. Today, I will start with the simple Q. Let's say we have a Q to hold 5 integers. Task A is a sender task, and task B is receiver task. Task ascends an integer to the queue. As the queue is empty, the data will acquire the first place. When task ascends another data, and it will occupy the second place. If the receiver task B reads the data from the queue, it will read from the head of the queue. Once the data is read, it will be removed from the queue, and all the contents in the queue will shift right. This is how the queue works at the basic level. Let's start by creating a project in Cube IDE first. I am using STM32F446RE. Give some name to the project, and click Finish. I am selecting external clock for the MCU. Select a time base source, anything other than Cystic. Here I am using timer 6. UART 2 is to communicate with the computer. Enable the free RTOS version 1. Leave everything default. We have one default task created here. Let's go to the clock setup now. I have 8 MHz crystal on my board. HSE means that we are taking input from external crystal. I want the MCU to run at maximum clock. The setup is done, just save it, so that the code can be generated. I am not going to use the CMSYS related functions, that's why we need to manually include all the RTOS related files. These are already present inside the folder, we just need to include them in our code. We can remove the CMSYS now. Other than these, I am including string.h for the string related operations. Let's remove all the default task related functions, which were generated by default. We have to define the task handlers first. There are going to be two sender tasks, and one receiver task. Next, we need to define the queue handler. I am naming it simple queue. These are the task functions. Where the task code will be written. Inside the main function, first of all we need to create the queue. XQ create takes two parameters. First is the length of the queue. 
This queue can hold up to five elements. And next is the size of each element. I want the queue to hold the integer elements, that's why, integer size. If there is some error while the creation of the queue, it will return zero. And we will display this string on the console. If the queue was created successfully, it will return anything other than zero. And in that case, we will display this string. Next, we need to create three tasks. X task create takes the following parameters. The task code that we define here. Some name for the task. Stack size. The parameter that you want to pass to the task. Priority of this task. And last is the handler for this task. This is a high priority task, so I have given a priority of 3 to it. In the same way, I am going to create a low priority task with the priority of 2, but this time I am going to pass some parameter to this task. If you take a look at the definition of x task create, the parameter is of type void pointer. That's what we need to pass into this task. So, I am sending a void pointer to this number. Next, we will create a receiver task, with the least priority of 1. This is to receive serial data from the computer in interrupt mode. I still need to define the Rx data. And at last, we are going to start the scheduler. Here is the high priority sender task. This number will be sent to the queue. To convert the milliseconds into the ticks. When the control enters HPT, this string will be sent via UART. Then we will send the data into the queue. XQ send takes the following parameters. The first is the queue handler. Next is the address of the data that you want to send. And last is the ticks to wait before the timeout occurs. I am sending this number to the queue, and I want the task to wait forever for the space to become available, in case the queue is full. If the data is sent successfully, it will return PD pass, and we will print this on the console. then the task will go into suspension for 2 seconds. Next is the lower priority sender task. Remember that I passed a number as the parameter, while the task was created. To send we'll get the value from the parameter.
we will store the value in the toSend variable. Next, this string will be printed on the serial console to indicate that the control has entered the LPT task. Next, the number will be sent to the queue. If the queue is full, the task will wait forever for the space to become available. Then the task will go into the suspension. Next is the function for the receiver task. First I have created a variable to save the data. We are going to send this string to the console. Next we are going to read the data from the queue. XQ receive takes the following parameters. The handler to the queue. The variable where the data must be saved. The number of ticks to wait for the data to become available, in case the queue is empty. If there is some error in receiving data, it will not return return PD true, and we can display this string then. Or else the data received will be sent to the console. After this, the receiver task will go into the suspension for 5 seconds. Let's build this code. There seems to be some error about sprintf. I forgot to include the library for that. Let's build the code and debug it. I am using Hercules for the serial communication. I am letting it run for some time. Let's pause it now. So, the integer queue was created successfully. Now, when the scheduler runs, the control will first go to the high priority task. It's a sender task, and it will send 222 to the queue. You can see the current queue status on the right. After leaving high priority task, the control will enter the low priority sender task. I will also send the number 111 to the queue, and the number will be copied as shown in the picture. Next. The receiver task will run, and it will read one data item from the queue. The data read is 222, as you can see in the console. Also, the items in the queue will shift to the right, and you can see the updated queue on the right. Now, after 1 seconds, LPT task will wake up, and sends 111 to the queue. Now, after another 1 second, both HPT and LPT will wake up, but HPT will run first, and they both will send the respective numbers to the queue. Again after 1 second, LPT wakes up and write 111 to the queue. Now the queue is full, and when HPT wakes up, it's not able to write the data into the queue, and so it will be blocked, until some space is available in the queue. Same will happen for the lower task. Now when the receiver task runs, 
it will read and remove one item from the queue. One space will be available in the queue, high priority task will preempt the receiver task, and write the data into the queue, and go into suspension for two seconds. Control will re-enter the receiver task, and it will execute rest of the task. It will print the number received from the queue, and go into suspension for 5 seconds. Now the high priority task will run, and it will try to write the number into the queue. As the queue is full, it will go into the blocked state. 5 seconds later, when the receiver task wakes up, same thing happens again. And it will keep happening. Next, we will see how can we send the data into the queue from the interrupt service routine. I am writing the receive callback function for the UART. This is the number that I am going to send to the queue. If the data received is R, we must first define the high priority task woken to false. I am sending data using XQ send to front from ISR. This will send the data to the front of the queue. The parameters of this function are, queue handler, the data to be sent, and the high priority task woken. Note that, there is no waiting period. If the queue is full, this function will simply time out. And at last, we must call the port end switching ISR. If the high priority task woken was set true, this will do the context switching. Looks like there is some warning. We have to pass the address of this variable here. All is good now, let's debug our code. I have sent the character, ah, and we can see the string also printed here. Let's see what happened here in each step. Integer Q was created. High priority task runs, and write the number into the queue. LPT runs, and write another number. Receiver task reads and removes the first number from the queue. Again LPT runs, and writes another number to the queue. It will keep going on, until the data, ah, is received from the UART. The number 12345689 is sent to the front of the queue, and the rest of the items will shift back. When the control enters the receiver task, it will read this number, as it's the first number in the queue. After reading, the number will be removed from the queue, and rest of the processing of the queue will continue in the usual order. In this video we saw how to create integer queue and how to pass data between the tasks, using this queue. In the next video, I will cover the pointer queue. So that we can send the entire strings in the queue. We will also see how to use the malloc function in RTOS. That will solve our problem with the sprintf, and the RTOS. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Have a nice day.